Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss one very important question on circular motion from October number 2021, paper 4, variant 1. I said this question is very important because this question will help you to improve your conceptual understanding of circular motion. And it will also challenge your understanding of circular motion. In today's class, we are talking about October, November 2021, paper 4-1. And total time for this exam is 2 hours and you need to answer all the questions. And total mark for this paper is 100. On the second page of exam paper, you can also find values of some constants and these are very important because in your exam, maybe for some calculations, you will need them. So you can come back to second page and you can find values of constants. On third page, you can find some basic formulae. Let me highlight the one especially you need for A2 physics. The first one is about gravitational potential. With the help of this one, you can find potential at any point in gravitational field. But you can also use this one to calculate gravitational potential energy. Simply you need to multiply potential with mass. And next one is about ideal gas. You can calculate pressure with the help of this one, but you can also rearrange this one and you can calculate average translational kinetic energy of gas. Most of the time in exam, they will ask you to derive translational kinetic energy of molecules. You will need this formula. So you have to start from this one to derive translational kinetic energy of molecules. Next one is about simple harmonic motion. It's a very important one and this is the basic formula. And every simple harmonic oscillator has to obey this equation. So this is very important. Simply I can say this is key formula for simple harmonic motion. Next one is about velocity of particle in simple harmonic motion. If you need to calculate velocity at any given time, you can use this one. But if you need to calculate velocity at any given displacement, you can use this one. X here is the displacement. So X here is the displacement. X naught is the amplitude and omega is angular frequency. And next one is about electric potential. This formula, also basic formula, you need this one for calculations in electric field, means calculations about electric field. If you need to find potential at any point in electric field, you can use this one. And next one is about capacitance in series, very basic formula. You also need to understand how to derive this one. And the next one is about capacitors in parallel. You also need to understand how to derive this one as well. And the next one is about energy stored in a charge capacitor. Q is the charge on single plate of the capacitor. And V is the potential difference between plates. And next one is about Hall voltage. Very important one. Most of the time, if there is any question about Hall voltage, even they will ask you what is N, what is T, and what is Q. So you need to understand what is T, what is N. Next one is about alternating current or alternating voltage. So this is basic formula. If this is V, so this will be V naught. If this is I, this has to be I naught. So that's the reason they have written alternating voltage and current. Next one is about radioactive decay. And this is very basic formula. So let me highlight some points about this one. For example, you can use this relationship because this is telling you the relationship between X and T. And X can be N, X can be number of nuclei at any given time. So then you can say this will be equal to N naught E to the power of minus lambda T. X also can be activity at any given time. If you need to calculate, then this will be equal to A naught E to the power of negative lambda T. Even this one we can also use for discharging capacitor, means when the capacitor discharge. So simply I can write on here discharging capacitor. So when capacitor discharge, we can also use this one for current, for voltage and also for charge. So when capacitor discharge, I is equal to I naught e to the power of minus T over tau. So tau is equal to RC. So you can also remember this one with the help of this relationship. And when capacitor discharge, V is also equal to V naught e to the power of minus T over RC means this is tau is time constant. Q we can also say this will be equal to Q 
naught initial charge times e to the power of negative t over R C. So understanding of this formula is very important. So all these formula you can simply remember with this relationship. This is exponential decay. Also exponential decays. And the last one is about decay constant. This is the half life. So this is here is the half life. So if you have value of half life, you can plug in here and you can find out decay constant. For part A, question is asking us to describe uniform circular motion with reference to velocity and acceleration. It simply means that we need to describe uniform circular motion using reference of velocity and acceleration means simply using concept of velocity and acceleration. First of all, let's try to understand in a very simple way, what is uniform circular motion? Or simply we can say, what is UCM? Uniform circular motion simply means that speed of object is constant. Means when the body is doing circular motion, its speed does not change. So this is the simple idea, the main concept we have. Now let's try to understand this one with the help of velocity and acceleration. Let's say this is our circle and there's a one body that is doing circular motion. And the velocity of this body, let's say, is V. Now, as the speed of this body is constant, it means it has no angular acceleration, it has no linear acceleration or tangential. So the resultant force in this case has to be pointing towards center. So let's say this is force F. And direction of acceleration always same as direction of resultant force. So this is direction of resultant acceleration or we can say net acceleration. And this net acceleration in this case is centripetal acceleration. Now if you look at force and velocity, the angle between them is 90 degrees and the angle between V and acceleration is also 90 degrees. Now we need to understand why the speed is not changing as there is force acting on this one. The force is acting when the speed is not changing. So simply we need to understand the work done by this force. Work done by this force we can say Fd cosine of theta and the angle between force and the displacement that is 90 degrees. So this is F the cosine of 90 degrees and cosine of 90 degrees this is equal to zero so the work done by force is equal to zero if no work is done by the force on this body it means there will be no change in kinetic energy of the particle or we can simply say of object as there is no work done by the force it means there is no change in kinetic energy. So that's the reason speed stays constant. And that is only possible if velocity and acceleration, they are perpendicular to each other. Mean this net acceleration and this velocity, they are perpendicular to each other. We can say AC, I would say this is A net, not only AC. A net and velocity, they have to be perpendicular. And magnitude of velocity has to be constant. So the second thing we can say then, V is constant. The magnitude of V is constant because this is uniform circular motion. So these two points simply we have to write down. If we write down these two points, we will get two marks. Now let me show you the answer. How you can write down answer means the points you need to write a good answer. So these are the two points you have to mention in your answer. The first one, if you have mentioned constant magnitude of velocity, means magnitude of velocity is not changing, you will get one mark and this is B mark. And the second one, if you have mentioned acceleration always perpendicular to velocity, you will get second mark. For part B, it is given to us two cars are moving around a horizontal circular track. One car is moving in circle X, means this is given X, and the other car is moving in circle Y. Radius of circle X is given, and that is equal to 318 meters. We can say this is Rx, so this is Rx. Radius of circle Y, we can also find out, and that one will be equal to 27 plus 318 meters. It is also given to us, mass of each car is 790 kilograms, means they have the same mass. And maximum sideways frictional force each car experienced, that is also 
the same. And the maximum speed for the car moving in circle X is given and that is equal to 94 meters per second. And question is asking us to calculate F means the force acting on car x means the car moving in circle x so you can simply imagine that this is car and this is moving in circle x we need to find out the force acting on this one means the frictional force that is acting sideways we need to find out and this is f this force we need to find out now as it is moving in a circle it is doing circular motion so this frictional force is responsible for circular motion. So simply in this case, frictional force is providing the centripetal force. So we can simply say F in this case is equal to mv square divided by r. Now value of v is given, value of r is given, m is given. Simply we can plug in and we can find out the value of F. Mass in this case is 790 kilograms and the maximum force, we need to find the maximum value of F. So we have to consider the maximum speed. Maximum speed is 94. So this is 90 four squared divided by radius of the circle as it is in this circle x so the radius is 318 now simply if we solve this one our final answer will be 22,000 newton we can simply say 22 kn or simply here we can write down this is 22,000 newton and this is the force and this question has two marks and the first mark is if you have used this formula you will get one mark and that is c1 mark and the second mark is answer mark if you have got the right answer you will get second mark for the second part we need to compare centripetal acceleration of x with y we also need to compare the maximum speed of x with y and also we need to compare the time taken for one complete cycle of x with y so let's start first of all what is the same for the car when it is moving in a circle x and what is the same for the car which is moving in circle y in question it is given to us that the mass is the same means these two cars they have the same mass so first thing we can write down they have the same mass it is also given to us they experience the same maximum friction force so the maximum sideways friction force that is also the same for x and also same for y let's start from centripetal acceleration first of all we can simply say in this case f max this is equal to the centripetal force means centripetal force is provided by sideways friction force and this is equal to m a c in this case f max is the same for x and same for y and mass of these two cars is also the same so it means a c is also the same for x and also for y so simply we can tick here so same for x same for y now we need to compare the maximum speed in order to compare maximum speed we can simply rearrange this centripetal force equation in this way we can say fc is equal to mv square over r but in this case fc is the same means f max is the same m is the same now if r is bigger r is greater it means v has to be greater but in this case r y this is greater than r x so it means v y has to be greater than v x so simply in this case v y is greater than v x so this is we can tick here the last one is about time taken so for time taken we can rearrange this one centripetal force equation we can simply say this is m r omega square we have to compare time so omega we cannot directly compare with omega so we can write on this one in form of time so we can rearrange we can write on mr omega is equal to 2 pi over t t is the time period we have to compare time period so it must be in our equation so we can say this is 2 pi over t square now if you look at this equation again now so this is fc this is the same mass is the same and 2 pi is the same now simply we left with r and t squared so if r is bigger if r is bigger so simply i can 
say in this case let me write down in detail fc is constant so we can write down here m is constant we can write down we can divide by m here and 4 pi we can also divide this one by 4 pi square so 4 pi square so these all these quantities are constant so simply we, we left with r over t square so this is constant so these quantities are constant so we can write down these quantities are constant it simply means that the ratio of r over t square this has to be constant this ratio has to be constant so simply we can say it has to be constant now if r is bigger this quantity is bigger time has to be greater to keep constant the ratio between these two to keep constant t has to be greater so it means if r y is greater than r x so the time taken to complete one cycle for y that will be greater than time taken by x so t y has to be greater than t x so we can simply declare and this question has three marks so this has one mark this is b1 means we have to tick here and this one also has one b mark you must tick in this circle and the last one is also b1 mark so if you tick in this rectangle you will get this mark that's all for this question i hope it is clear to you simply you need to understand how to rearrange centipede force equation to answer these questions.